last time on Stemming the Tide, we found ourselves in Tulak's caravan with a gem and a doll. We put the gem and the doll and it came to life, a tortured little soul named Borbo. Borbo asked for his master, Voluk, but from what we can understand, he lived a long time ago. They may have lived back at the same time as Belcora. Through some investigation, we found out that Borbo wants to die, but to do so, we'll have to destroy his soul gem with some moral objections, largely on the part of Lady Gilda, we took the soul gem out of Borbo. We, we still need some information that he may have, especially where those events happened 500 years ago. With the air a bit heavy, we parted ways, myself going to the crook's nook to see Yin Yasmara. She explained the boat we had found earlier. Apparently four members of the Osprey Club went into the Gauntlet Keep, and they haven't been heard from since. Inyazmara offered a reward, should we find them and bring them back, and I told her that we would, also accepting a bit of an early payment on some future services rendered. Mr. Turlock goes to see Morlebent and ask about the books that we had found. We didn't learn much about those books, but while he was there, he got some information about Will-O-Wisps. Lady Gilda found her way to the market. Selling off some of her equipment, she got herself some hand wraps of mighty blows, where she'll be punching things better than ever. After that, she went to the Dawnflower Library. She wanted to learn more about the Will-O-Wisps, and specifically Flicker-Wisps. She did learn some about these Masters of Confusion. So going back to the Gauntlet, we felt a bit more confident in what we were getting ourselves into. On the way back to the Gauntlet, Lady Gilda recalled what brought her here. She remembered sitting by the beach in a small fishing camp outside of Artari, penning a letter back home about the horrors that she saw the night the dead attacked the town and the grim duty that awaits her now. Alright, well, uh, welcome back, everyone, to another episode, Stemming the Tide. I, uh, I believe we left off with you guys traveling back to the Fog Fen, making your way down the Gaunt Trail, and this time you are properly entering the ruins at night. Not just camping out out front like you did before, but properly entering at night. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No intro banter. You're just sending us right into the fog fan. I'm worried now. <laughs> I just want to know how you're all feeling about that. <laughs> this is this is my intro banter. I want to know I want to know how nervous you are or if you're nervous at all. Well, I just want to toss in, you know, a peek behind the curtains for the listeners. Uh, oh, Freeman yeah. messaged me about an hour before session today and just asked if my backup characters were level appropriate and ready oh, same. to go. So. <laughs> yeah, it's the same uh, I didn't get that, which is great because I do not have a backup character, nor do I have one that's level appropriate. So, Yeah, I, that's why I didn't ask James because I knew he didn't have one already. <laughs> I have been genuinely distressed ever since. Well, let's just, let's just establish here that, that, you know, it's not necessarily when i ask these questions or, or point you in a certain direction it's so you guys <laughs> i mean every player does this or most players do this you get it's easy to get really worked up and imagine more than than necessary you know like take the boat for example i plugged that boat on the pier over and over and over to the point where you guys didn't trust me and and all you all that was really there was a clue you know but you thought danger was was absolutely nearby <laughs> it's because we don't trust you yeah, that's that's fair, <laughs> and you shouldn't. <laughs> Spoiler alert: you already killed one of us at level one. 
Uh, yeah. Well, you know, it, it is what it is. Like you never know when uh, you never know when I'm going to proffer an opportunity or or lead you to astray, and uh, and you never know. I never know when you guys are going to like you know basically turn down an opportunity, and and the role play dictates it. So like such as the killing of Boss Scrong begging for his life. You guys will probably never know uh, what could have come out of that. But Samal just destroying him out of a we'll call it a slight. Slight frustration uh, was awesome. <laughs> Such Vicious a moment. Yeah. <laughs> so no regrets, but, you know, you just never really know what's behind that curtain. I just feel like, you know, we need to get straight into this because we, we just finished two back-to-back episodes of pure role play and meta talk. Uh, not planned at all. Uh, just kind of came out very organically. But one thing is for sure is you guys are heading back to the Fog Fen for... Uh, a couple of a couple of reasons, I guess, but one in particular at the forefront is is very much to destroy this flicker wisp. But also on top of that list is the fact that Tulak has Borbo still and the Soul Gem, hoping to use him for more information if possible. And Lady Gilda has expressed the wish to explore the ruins proper herself so she can get a better lay of that land. Uh, you've, you've told her all the stories, you know, as we go already. However, she's not seen it in full for herself. And so we are just going to really just jump straight into it here. And uh, we're looking at about quarter after nine at night when you arrive and it is dark. So as you're traveling along this trail, only physic can really see without torch and light and that sort of thing. How do you guys want to sort that out? There's no moon or anything? It's that dark? It's it's foggy enough in the fog fen that very little comes through, so it's proper right. dark. Very persistent. Not a problem. Tulok will turn to Lady Gilda and cast light on her fists? <laughs> uh, I was going to say on her weapon, and then I realized. <laughs> yeah, on not her shield? <laughs> Uh, on, on my hand wraps of Mighty Blows, I think is probably the best way to do it. Yeah. I don't see why not. Except then it's like, okay, if we're talking real real fists here, you'd think you'd be bringing it back to your face to protect your face. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> then you're just staring you're just into the torchlight. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, she's got a shield, so like she's got the shield up, her hand out front of her. Um, I don't, I, unless you want to take the lead, I don't know what else to do here, but... <laughs> Nope, that's good. Kind of a funny sight, just holding the shield up and then <laughs> fist out. <laughs> just like, uh, yeah, he'll cast on the on the hand wraps. Okay. Hand wraps, sure. Are you wearing a helmet at all? Nope, no helm. No? Well, that would have been convenient, wouldn't it? Not really, no. This, this glowing light shining all the way around her head. <laughs> Instead, you've got to poke your hand outside of your main form of defense, being your shield. <laughs> She's very quick. It's fine. Those wraps are just to slow those hands down. All right, well, uh, you're here, and you've you've lit up Lady Gilda's fist. Physic has dark vision, so he's good. Although, perhaps... Perhaps I what? what? I, gonna, I, don't, I don't even know what I was going to say there. <laughs> All right, well... <laughs> I lost my train of thought already, so just cut that. <laughs> cut it, although... <laughs> T-Lock will be taking the avoid notice action. Typical. I want to take the defend action, but there's no real reason to if you're going to attempt to avoid notice. <laughs> no, that it totally is. Just because you are noticed doesn't mean I am noticed. I guess that's true. Uh, I will, Depends on what his positioning, yeah. I will take the defend action then and uh, hang out ahead of them, like 10 feet, I guess. Okay. So they're still in the light. So what's, the, what's first on the list here? What do you guys want to do? It's dark... It's not going to be easy for somebody with no dark vision to search the lighthouse, so that seems counterproductive. So I I would imagine we go right to the boathouse and try and uh, tackle these corpse lights. Flicker wisps, sir. <laughs> Good sir. It's called a flicker wisp. Uh, yeah. Corpse light. Agree with James. I think we should go straight there, deal with that. And if we make it to morning time, we can search then. Maybe we can catch one in a jar and use it like a like a torch in the original Zelda games. Hey. There you go. Now you're talking. Yeah, that's a great plan because Physic was not about to volunteer his dark sight to go searching the lighthouse by himself. Fair enough. All right. So should we move around the outside? Same way as usual. At some point, we should rebuild this bridge. Honestly. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, we might as well just do what we normally do and, and get back there and get uh, uh, Tube Top out of the boathouse or out of the, the laboratory <laughs> so he's not in our way. Uh, hopefully they've cleaned out all the broken glass. <laughs> No, no doubt that name is inspired by a recent recent edits with uh, with just um, Scott going. What's his name? Thumble Thumble Tube. I think you named like four different options before you get in the right one. <laughs> it's great. Tussle Top sounds better in my mind. Tussle Top. Yeah, that was that was a good one. Uh, all right. Well, I, I've I've moved you into the the L shaped hallway here. Um, what route do you want to go from there? If I recall the door to the actual lighthouse to the north of us here is blocked on this side or do we open that yeah it, it, it's just very um it's waterlogged and, and and swollen in its in its frame so you need to need to kind of batter it down i think we just go the outdoor route as per usual we can get a get a glance ahead of time at these flicker wisps if we can see them sure Maybe draw them onto land as opposed to dealing with them on the precarious dock where somebody will surely drown. So you're heading through the the room, past where the giant flies were, where the dead frog is, and out along the western side of the ruins. True. Avoiding the water. Standing as close to the exterior of the building as possible. Okay. Again, with the unnecessary fear. Yeah, n- <laughs> nothing to be scared of around here, is there? Just out here avoiding notice. <laughs> Just casually avoiding notice. And as, you, as you're traveling along um, this western side, you can see, you know, different um, evidences of, of, you know, how the swamp works at night. Like, it's more obvious when um, little flashes of gas pop up from the water. Um, there are different sounds, a lot more uh, insects and crickets and, and, uh, and various things. Uh, perhaps the occasional screech from a bat... And as you get close to the boathouse, it becomes pretty clear because because you are looking for it, you are you are you are waiting for it. You see a batch of fireflies floating over the far pier next to the workshop and the Northern Island. And we don't know if they know any languages or anything. You have no clue. Okay, I feel like that probably would have come up in the research. So, well, before we move on, do we want to fight them at the door to the workshop? over or do we want to try and draw them onto land over here yeah is you're across the water from them like we could theoretically try and taunt them fucking to in any direction right uh, and try and draw them across the water as opposed to dealing with this fucking rickety dock we have had yeah much luck with rickety objects before so maybe let's let's coax them on over you do already know that the the pier by the boathouse next to the boat is, you know, reasonably sturdy. Gilda got on it with her armor and everything. But the far one, uh, you don't know. You haven't tested it. And it looks pretty damn rickety. All right. Tulok is going to head to the edge of the shore. So being on the far bank, he's about 45 feet away from where these firefly lights are. We had discussed strategy and really settled on not much. <laughs> You do have a couple pieces of vital information. You know that this particular type of wisp, you know, uh, works with confusion uh, in a certain way and is not uh, likely to be accidentally, uh, it's not likely to accidentally fall victim to said confusion. Um, and it is a little more dangerous in close proximity. And, and of course, you know, the what was it? The, the, uh, it's immune to magic uh, as a, except for a, a few select spells. Do we know if they're undead or not? Uh, you would sort of assume they are not, because a corpse light is a very specific exception to the general rule of a wisp. Mm. Wisps are not undead creatures, but the corpse light was. It is a it is a cor- uh, it is a wisp that has died and is barely clinging on to a mortal existence. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but wisps wisps, wisps themselves are not undead creatures generally. Okay. They are aberrations. Rats. Wisps. Well, I mean, if there's any dead rats in there, we might get some of those, too. <laughs> Let's just try to taunt them over, then. So, at the edge of the bank here, Lady Gilda to his side, Physic shortly behind. I'm going to... You didn't have to say shortly behind. He's just behind. 
<laughs> Small character mechanic behind. <laughs> <laughs> He's behind and very short. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> We're painting a word picture here. <laughs> <laughs> so Tulak will turn to them and shouting across the bank, you there, wisps, come, we'd like to parlay. And I guess, like, do I want to make an impression on that? I'm starting yeah, with diplomacy. Okay. I will attempt to aid if possible. Oh, sure. Yeah. Did you roll that secret? Yep. Uh, using my cooperative nature, that is a plus 10 to that roll. Uh, yeah, you rolled a 23, so that's a that's a solid aid. Um, and um, you get no response. They're just a group of fireflies near the edge of a pier. Didn't we learn that they, they go for, like, lost people, like people that don't know where they are or they're generally confused and kind of, like, they prey on that lack of certainty? Yeah, that's that's wisps in general. They 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 prey on like sadness and anguish and pain and that sort of thing. And these guys pay, uh, are, are a little bit different. They still relish in those, but they prefer things like confusion. Uh, they are, you know, often looking for a wayward person to attack and or, or take advantage of. Okay, Tulak is moving to the dock on our side because it can get him much closer. And mm -hmm. as an ex exploration activity, instead of avoiding notice, he is now detecting magic. And he is 25 feet away. So if there's magic, or if there is magic, let me know. Um, ooh, uh, that's a tough one. Look, at, are these creatures inherently magical? I'm going to say no. You do not detect magic. They're just some fireflies, guys. Uh, can I roll a perception check just to see if they are different than fireflies? Like, Yeah, I'll, I'll roll it for you real quick. Yeah, you're having a hard time uh, seeing anything out of the blue. One thing is for sure is that they are, it's odd they're congregated over a pier. Like, why would a group of fireflies be there? And you were told they would be there as well by Tangletop. But you can't see anything... Um, from your position, but you're also like not built for for looking in the dark here. Like, you have some light coming from from Gilda, but you don't have any light coming from yourself unless you're pulling in a torch or anything. I mean, they're fireflies. I think that yeah, they themselves give off a certain amount of light as well. But you're not you don't have enough uh, to go on to differentiate from normal fireflies to anything else that's happening or that might be happening. Maybe if you pretend to be lost there, Tulak, give them a little show, you know play it up how lost you are in the dark okay Tulak calls out into the fog is there someone out there help I see your light we're lost and we can't get back to Otari please if anyone hears me we're stranded we're out of food and we're cold please help us and once more with feeling <laughs> <laughs> Oh, throwing shade. <laughs> we don't even know what he Not rolled yet. Not good enough in physics book. <laughs> yeah. Performance? What do you need from me? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I would say performance or deception. Um, deception feels more like it. There you go. Uh, and um, as you're saying that, Tangletop pops his head out from the workshop. He's like, what's going on out there? But also, the fireflies start to move a little bit off the pier and slowly towards Tulak's direction. Are you across the water? Yeah. Well, look at these fun little animations he has. Yeah, they're really Oh. Neat. It's like a goddamn Disney cartoon going on right now. Tulak takes a step or two back and says, You there with the light, please come help us. Do you hear me? Can you hear me? Tank on top of the back. I don't have a light. Who is out there? Uh, can I tell Tangle Todd to shut up? He's <laughs> waving his hand like. <laughs> okay, Tulak has backed up. He's now beside Gilda inside of the crumbled boathouse. Uh, Gilda will take a five foot step, blocking the doorway with her shield up, taking the defend action still. And as you do, the, these these fireflies continue to 
to move over, but then they end up over top of the boat as opposed to the pier, and they settle somewhere around there. Uh, Gilda will throw a javelin to see if it provokes them. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Gilda is going to throw a javelin straight into the mix. Get him. That is a 15 to hit. The javelin soars straight through the, the congregation of these fireflies, but then they shift and form a line and they go back to a smattering and cloud of fireflies and they go back into a line again and then form a ball of light and they keep changing these these shapes and, and, and whatnot and they, they re- they're very much reacting to uh, what you've just done and suddenly they form into a creature that looks like this. Ooh. Ooh. I don't like the looks of that. It's the easiest things to fight. Describe it for the listeners. <laughs> That's why I give it to you guys. You describe it for the listeners. <laughs> I just couldn't figure out how, so I was trying to... Get <laughs> trying to yeah, pass the buck. It looks kind of like <laughs> if you mixed a strand of hair that you found in the drain with the liquid from a glow stick. It's like if... if <laughs> honestly, not a bad call. It's, it's like if Cousin bad, yeah. It from the Adams Family was also part of the Cthulhu mythos. Ooh, and at a rave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would want to go to that right Yeah, now. it is. It is. It's. It looks like you've chopped off someone's like long ass ponytail while it's underwater, uh, and it's all maintained this long kind of grouping of strands. And there's these 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 lights and and these yellow lights and uh, and, uh, and and dots and stuff just swirling all around it, and it shifts and moves and and these this really strange way. Uh, and we are of course now going to roll initiative. Don't ever cut my hair if we're in water. Or if we're not in water. <laughs> Are you talking in character or just in general? <laughs> just in general. If we're at the pool together, doing any weird ideas, Freeman. I mean, I usually bring my scissors to the pool, but I, I guess I yeah. won't next time. That's just for <laughs> running with. Because that's the best place to run, yeah. <laughs> you, ever, you ever run with scissors or run at the pool? Try both. Oh, it's like a double <laughs> negative. Highly it highly cancels right it. in. <laughs> It's the safest thing you could ever. Sorry, do. I'm I'm getting a I'm getting a an incoming broadcast here, and that is uh, Uncharted North. By absolutely no means recommends you do that. So <laughs> <laughs> we have James for proper PSAs. <laughs> All right, let's get some initiative going. Uh, Physic, let's do you first. How's this seventeen? Uh, I don't. We'll see. I guess pretty solid. I'd say though. <laughs> I'm just gonna set that as an okay benchmark to begin. <laughs> Lady Gilda, that's a twelve. Okay, Tulak, that's a fourteen, sir. Okie dokie. Uh, I'm gonna start combat, and it will be physic at the top. So pretty good, physic. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, in hindsight, really this came out swinging. I would like to. Pull up behind Lady Gilda and no further, like a safe little boy. And I, I decided to change my bombing routine this time, and I would like to throw an acid flask from... Is it cover behind Gilda, I imagine? Um, you're in actually you're in a double doorway here, so I think you have some extra leeway. I think you're all right. Oh, in that case, I'm just going to lob an acid flask. Okay, tossing an acid flask. Oof, shitty. Uh, 13 to hit. Not gonna hit, I'm afraid. It swoops and writhes out of the way. Would you still take the splash off that? Uh oh, yes. Um yes, I believe that's the case. I forgot about that. Yeah, you I will still take splash. Okay, so one one acid splash, yep. Okay. Uh that is two actions, and with his third, he will uh, draw the Caltrop Snare that he has. Oh, okay. And end his turn. Bearing in mind, this thing is floating in the air. Okay. Just, I don't know, but I don't know how snares can be set up, but I'm just, just throwing it out there. Tulak. All right, well, Tulak is uh, pretty hamstring by this combat, so at this point, he is going to raise his hands and just fire out three actions worth of of magic missiles. Yeah. Light them up. <laughs> All right. Numero uno. Three points of damage. Three points of damage. Dose. Another three points of damage. Come on, man. Nice. Need more. Need more. And final one. 
three points of damage. What the Ooh, fuck? That's a great average. You kidding? On a 1d4? Plus two. Oh. I rolled a one. That's a shit average. <laughs> yeah, one Damn. One. <laughs> Never mind. You suck. <laughs> Fucking three nat ones in a row. Foundry. Just get him right out of the way. All right. Bam, bam, bam. That's uh, it. They all strike true. And that's you, Lady Gilda. Uh, first action, she's going to raise that shield. Second action is going to be to seek. Uh, I want to use perception to try and find out if this creature is alone or if there's more of it in my eye line or if those those wisps are going to uh, coagulate into a third one or a second one. Sorry. Okay. And uh, rolling perception for you. And uh, you, you spot nothing else. Everything else is quite still other than this writhing moat of light. Okay. Uh, with that, her third action, she's going to take cover. Take cover. Okay. So taking cover behind your shield. It's kind of a cool visual of just like it's the middle of the night, it's dark, it's foggy, and then this thing is just like dancing over the water with all the lights reflecting up off the marsh. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And then there's there's Lady Gilda, like shield up, taking cover, you're flanking her, you have bomb is thrown out, magic missiles coming over her shoulder, and this this light is gonna start moving its way towards all of you, of course. And it's going to use an ability called Flicker. And I need Lady Gilda to roll me a will save as it flashes and sparkles in a very bewildering array of distracting pulsations. That's like, that's pretty much verbatim from the ability. (laughs) That's how it's described. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking into my ancestry stuff. I know sometimes half elves have uh, things to do with things and stuff, but I don't think that's what I took. I think I took a bunch of human shit. Uh, okay, yeah, I love it when half, uh, half elves have things to do with things and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's usually pretty cool. Oh, they've, they've got <laughs> long histories of things to do with things and stuff. That is a 19 on the die for a 25, motherfucker. Holy hey, hell yeah! Geez, yeah, you, you good? You good? You good? And that's gonna go to the top of the order again. I, I hope it's one of those things where if you pass it once, you're, like, good for 24 hours or whatever it is, but we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, that would be swell. I guess you will. Hmm. Um, okay. The Caltrop Snare, probably not actually going to do me much good unless I can get to a spot that we're going to be retreating from. Okay. So I'm I'm reasonably okay, even though we passed your turn, I'm reasonably okay with you not, if you don't have that in your hands right now, because, like, we haven't really worked with snares much, and we don't, we don't, they're, they're kind of have a complicated rule set to them. Can you just throw it at them? No. Oh, you know what? E- even more so to say I'm okay with you not having pulled it out uh, is, is because, like, they actually, unless you have, like, certain feats uh, as, like, a ranger or a snare crafter uh, dedication, like, uh, archetype and stuff like that, they take, like, a full minute to set up. I'm also reasonably sure we set it up at the, the crumbled entrance in, like, the third episode. No, that was a different one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Got it. That one's yeah. still sitting there precariously that somebody mm-hmm. might step on on our way out of the place. So <laughs> Okay, yeah. got it. Actually, no, there's probably just some dead mitzvah in it. Yeah, it actually wouldn't make much sense if you would have pulled that out because you know how much time it would take. So if you have something else you would have liked to have pulled out, I'm happy with that. Uh, I mean, let's go ahead with a uh, the crossbow. Okay. We'll try that out. You'll still have to load it. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. It was not loaded. I will reload for one action and fire with another. Okay. Uh, For a 14 to hit. Uh, No dice. Seven on the die. (laughs) Physic is rough. (laughs) You're you're the worst roller for sure in this group. It's crazy. (laughs) Yeah, you... Okay, uh, I've been talking about buying my own set of real physical dice... And it's not because of past trauma with Foundry, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, anything else for you? You got one action left, I guess? Uh, I'm going to step away because I don't like how closely grouped we are. Okay. And that'll be my turn. Two lock. All right. Two lock is just going to keep spamming magic missiles. So, again, just reaching up will do another three round action, three action round of magic missiles. My apologies. And here we go. <laughs> Say three or our action is very different. Three. Okay, a little better. We got a five and a six. All right. So that's 14 points of damage. Describe how you destroy the Flicker Wisp. Oh, all right. Yeah. 
he just is leaning over Lady Gilda and just letting loose all these magic missiles, lighting up the area with purple, uh, purple magical light as it collide with the yellow light of the flicker wisp. And uh, I guess it just explodes. That's it. My guy. These little 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 uh, wisps of, of light, if you will, <laughs> pun intended. Uh, kind of uh, burst into the air like like little little quick flames off the gases of a swamp. Uh, there's several of them as you as you destroy this thing, and that's it. It's gone. It's done. Oh, much ado about nothing. Tulak is intrigued by this thing and steps out onto the dock. Did it drop any sort of body? Is there any evidence of it? Nothing. Nothing at all. Hmm. Although something falls in the water. What? Fuck you. But you see nothing. Something falls in the you water. You hear a slight splash, but n- but you see absolutely nothing. Careful out there, Tulok. Here, take this rope just in case. She will then reach into her pack, uh, pull out her rope, and hand one end to Tulok and tie the other one around her, her right hand with the hand wraps on it. I don't even know if I'm going to go after it because we do know from Morty. I think is what I started calling him. Morblint. <laughs> Morlebint. Morlebint. Yeah. Morlebint. Anyways, that they actually do have a form. They just control it to be lit up, right? We learned that from him. Yes, exactly. You, you, uh, yeah, you, you suddenly recall that, uh, they are inherently invisible. It's that they can light themselves up. So if they're tiny little weird gelatinous corpse just fell in the water, I'm not exactly going in after it. Yeah. And it's not like I would be worried about Tulak being able to swim. But if something started pulling him down, like, there's there's no pulling him back up. I've seen those fang frogs. I can go in and get it. I do swim pretty well. And in close combat is kind of where my specialty lies. But I won't be nearly as protected if I go down there. Tulak turns to Lady Gilda, offers the rope back. Uh, Don't worry about it. I think that... Whatever it is, whatever that corpse looks like, it's none of our concern now that it's dead. Not worth it. Keep your armor on and your wits about you. I just want to point out, too, that the water along the edge and near the the, the land is um, not likely to be very deep, although it will change depending on, on where you're positioned. Um, and this map doesn't really give you the the visual properly. So I just want to point out that the, uh, the, the pier here is actually reasonably high above the water line. Yeah. I mean, she's still in medium armor. She will drown. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. That's it. I'm just saying like, you don't have to get in the water to look is kind of the, what I'm kind of trying to get at. There's a reasonable gap between the pier and the water. And then of course, something's fallen into the water. So you would have to kind of get in the water to look down in the water so on and so forth. But I just want to give that, like, there's a level of elevation there you don't quite see on the map, and I want to make sure you know that. What about if Physic looked down with a bit of dark sight? I was just going to say, Tulak looks over the edge, and if he is able to see anything in the water, like a rock at the bottom, he casts light on it. Okay. Well, does that remove the light from Gilda? Can you only have one instance active at a time? It does, but it's a cantrip. But he, yeah, he can just f- do it any time. Um, well, why don't you, uh, why don't we do physic first? Since he's got dark vision, surely you'll want to turn the light out for yourself right away. We'll try to be as subtle as possible about it. Something does catch your eye. Something you did not expect. Uh, something that was very, very important to why I described the pier in that way. There is, in fact, a cave-like entrance into the ground beneath you. Oh, boy. And it's actually sizable enough that if you were to get into the boat and duck your heads, you could go inside. And it looks like it might open up quite a bit. So, and But all, you, all I see is like the mouth of the cave and blackness yeah. beyond. Uh, yeah, because it, it, it looks like it twists and turns a little bit beyond your immediate line of sight. Okay. But it is a way beneath you. And you, you kind of tell it like if you were to, you would probably would have caught it based on how you're looking at it now. You probably would have caught it if you were looking from the far pier. Right. So I'm assuming Tulak conveys this to the rest of the group. Well, physics. Uh, sorry, physics. 
in, in a more timid way than Tulak would have, I'm sure. <laughs> How big do you think it is there, Physic? Would it fit me and, and Tulak? And could we row the boat directly right into it? Or does it does it need to be walked into or swam into? Let me think about this for a minute. Hey, Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a it's a tight squeeze, uh, but I did say like if you get if you were to take the boat in, you could. Um, uh, but it would you'd have to like duck your heads to get in initially. But it looks like you know the initial approach would be tight, but once you're in, it, it looks like it opens up a bit, even yeah. though there's like a little bit of twisting and turning to it. Yeah, we we can try to take the boat in. It's it's going to be a tight squeeze. Well, that does give us another option for exploration here. It'll take us some time to hire some laborers to dig out that other area. So in the meantime, this might be a good place to go. Hey, Gerdel's doing a lot of heavy lifting there. I'm still not too keen on, on being anywhere near the water in this, but if you two want to go in quickly, take a look around, and then let me know if it's shallow in there or if it's deeper. Because if it's deeper, I don't think that's the way we're going to be going. You could always doff your armor too, just saying. Yeah. <laughs> I could, that yeah. <laughs> traditionally works very well. Yeah, yeah, whatever. No big deal. <laughs> You're to take it off when you sleep anyway, right? <laughs> Duncan <laughs> Duncan knows what's up. Yeah, Duncan knows what it's like to have your armor off. <laughs> and apropos of nothing, hey, fuck you, Baron. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I, I could. It would take me a minute to get it off, but it takes me two and a half minutes to get it back on. Honestly, that's not so bad. Uh, it it sounds a lot worse when combat happens, yeah. True. That's yeah. many rounds. All of the rounds. That's like two times time and a half to the, to the snare. Oh, boy. Yeah, I usually <laughs> measure time in snares worth. <laughs> uh, I only recognize time in 808, so... <laughs> Well, I mean, it's you don't have to go in right now, but you ha- like I have no idea what your your current motivations are realistically. Uh, but I, I just know that on the list of of things that you wanted to do was Gilda wanted to explore the ruins as well. You bypassed it for now, and then you maybe still have Tangletop to talk to. But yeah, we already got what we need from Tangletop though, and honestly, he kind of annoys me. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't necessarily oh. have to go back and talk to him. Oh, I found I found something Scott doesn't like. <laughs> he doesn't like any of my NPCs. I don't like NPCs. It's uh, that actually is a known thing. I'm super down for going into this cave. We just we need to figure out if it's you know deep inside. Because uh, if it's if it's like a boat adventure, then we got to find another way. I would rather do the graveyard again than than deal with a water adventure with a paladin with a tower shield. True. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping that once we get in there, there's going to be a bank and we're going to be able to hop up and be on ground underneath here. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's like if one of you guys wants to go in, specifically Physic, uh, we'll tie a rope around your waist, make you swim in, mm. and then if there's trouble, you just pull on it and I'll fucking reel you in. Or we'll take the boat. Or take Are the boat. there swimming mechanics? That, I haven't looked at swimming mechanics in this. Uh, it's a, it's you athletic. You want to swim. Swimming is not optimal. No. No. Uh, my athletics sucks anyways. Yeah. Because you basically are making athletics checks to move. And if if you're failing, you're just treading water, I think. And then if you're failing, critical failing, you're drowning. Oh, so it's like walking on glass, basically. Yeah, but worse because you can't drown <laughs> in glass. If it's calm, you succeed without needing to make a check. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I guess it's the combat that adds the... Yeah, extra dynamic the the turbidity yeah if it's turbulent water um you you start to sink 10 feet if you don't take a swim action that round but if it's just calm water you can just swim in without any checks let's put them in the boat but if if we have to pull them out we leave the boat in there that's my concern true i think i'll go with them oh okay yeah what if you paddle the boat while i scout like one gnarly little rudolph the red-nosed reindeer I'm just thinking because I don't want him down there by himself, and I don't want him swimming if possible. Right, but I could pull him so. out so quickly, though. Yeah, I get that's that true. part. If it's the both of you down there, there isn't a fast escape. That that's my con. But you know, if that if that's what Tulak wants to do, like Gilda's not going to stop you. Like she's not. She doesn't think of herself as in charge of this party. She's just throwing out ideas. Yeah, I don't think Tulak wants Physic to go swimming. So Tulak will hop in the boat now. Gilda, I think that I will 
paddle the boat and we'll take Physic in there. And we'll come out and let you know what it looks like inside. Don't worry, we won't go far. Just as much as we can get a good vantage point inside. She uh, she hands you the rope again. <laughs> Just take this, maybe tie it to the boat, what, what have you. I'm going to keep a good watch and I'm going to keep braced. We have 50 feet here, so we should be all right. He ties it to the aft of the boat. Uh, does anybody have any like glass bottles or anything like that? Ooh, that's something I haven't really thought of because I've been administering all of these like flasks of shit. I imagine he doesn't just toss the shit on the ground. Yeah, no, you you for sure have a surplus of them. Can Gilda have like one or two even? Uh, you know what? One would be just fine. Yep. Okay. I don't have an inventory item for it or anything, but I'm sure it's fine. Um, what she wants to do is yeah, take whatever. the glass and then break it in this square up here, and then line the door the open door with caltrops so that way she can just focus on what's happening if somebody comes through here they're going to break the glass and and let off the sound and if they try and sneak up on her through the rubble it shouldn't be stable enough to yeah yeah. okay i mean i don't want to retread old ground but do you want a caltrop trap no i mean she's got she's got caltrops um but she doesn't know how to put up a snare this is just quick and dirty like it'll slow them down yeah just toss them on the ground the presence Yeah. yeah So out front of the door will okay. be the broken glass, and then inside the door will be the caltrops. Okay. And not wanting to admit that he didn't want to get a rope tied around him and go swimming to Gilda, <laughs> he's going to turn to Tulak and be like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Tulak casts shield on himself. <laughs> um, actually, that is funny point of order, because I didn't cast mage armor on myself today because... Though it is active in uh, Foundry still, oh, I didn't okay. cast it yeah, on that's myself what I meant, yeah. because I was worried about being useless in combat, like having one less spell. Yeah, yeah. so I will now cast Mage Armor on myself. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, sometimes your Mage Armor is just having a positive attitude. <laughs> <laughs> so that's three uh, level one spell slots spent already. Yeah. Yep. Ooh, you got you got much left. One. Oof. Okay. All right, so just just getting it clear here, you're setting up uh, triggers for anything, anything sneaking on you just in case, and then you're going to tie the rope to the boat, and the boat's going in, and it's just two luck on it. And physic. Yeah, physic's gonna be at the, going to be okay. at the bow of the boat, I imagine, to scout yeah. with his dark vision so they can okay. go in in the dark. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, all right, if the both of you want to click on that little... Uh, cave icon that's on the map oh kind of dreading it but oh boy oh this is dank and did you did you cast light on yourself or are you just relying on on physics dark vision here i am going to rely on physics dark vision for now because i don't want to leave gilda up there in pitch dark okay i think in foundry you have you can see gray and white but that's because you can see your your allies tokens um uh, what they've seen already, so just bear in mind that you, you literally can't see anything. It's pitch black. I mean, physics is a good communicator. <laughs> if nothing else, at least he communicates. Yeah, he rolls like shit, but he talks a lot. <laughs> uh, all right, so you you kind of get into this tight uh, spot. The boat barely squeezes through. The rope is like you know, just floating on the water, just beneath the water a bit as it goes over the end of the pier. And um, you see it open up quite shortly. And uh, you can see that it wasn't really quite to a sea attorney, but rather there seems to be a number of alcoves in this cavernous sort of area um, that appears to be quite flooded. But you can quickly tell as you move a bit forward uh, that there is uh, some shallower water. And in particular, uh, the first thing you see is to the north east is a bit of land and with the assumption that you are searching using the search action here Mm -hmm. um, to scan Mm -hmm. the area physic you notice down here to the south that there is in fact a chest Ooh! so tulak turns to physic and says physic how deep how deep does it look down there does he have any idea uh no not really you you know even with dark vision you can't really can't really see through water super clearly, especially uh, swampy water. If you wanted to, like, I don't know if you had a stick or a staff or something to, like, test it, but it's hard to tell. Yeah, we're basically floating on ink right now. I need to, I need something to test this out. Just cast light on a stone and drop it like a glow stick. 
Hell yeah. Ooh, that's clever. Uh, yeah, but then you're going to be in pitch dark. I'll survive. <laughs> Tulok takes a sling bullet out of his bag, casts light on it, and drops into the water. Okay, the Second cool. guild is left in darkness. She takes off her tower shield, pulls out a torch, and sparks it. And uh, you can tell it's about where you're at. It's about 10 feet deep. Okay, so roughly 3.5 physics. Two lock cast light on the ship. On the boat itself? Yeah. Okay, uh, it's got to be... <laughs> it's conspicuous. <laughs> I'm going to be a weird... I'm going to be weirdly stickler on this. It's got to be a thing that's uh, one bulk or less. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't just light the whole boat up. You can't do you can't do the tower shield, you can't do the boat. <laughs> Tulux stabs a dagger into the wooden paneling of the boat and lights it. Nice. Nice. Uh, and before I forget, because I've been just floating this in my brain, waiting for an opportunity, and, uh, and now, now I'm starting to forget it, uh, so I want to throw it there. In an effort to continue being better at hero points, uh, Tulux gets one. If not for this, then for having remembered uh, the, the light of wisps and how it works. For single-handedly defeating that corpse w- or that flicker wisp, <laughs> uh, that flicker wisp went down so quick and easy. But like you guys had so much information, you, you did a great strategy on that. Tuvok's the only one that hit it. Yeah, <laughs> crazy. <laughs> he just but oh, did he so, hit it? So that puts you at three of three. So you're capped out now on, on hero points. Yeah, just pretty solid. So don't don't forget to use those. This chest is it underwater? Uh, no, it appears to be uh, peeking out of the water a little bit. So there's a might be a minor amount of land there just under the water. You should be able to uh, float right to it, though, and, and give it an open. I do so. Okay, so you just go right up and open it? Yep. Here we go. All right. And inside, it's a sizable chest. There is a, some gold, 36 pieces of gold. There is a wand, a compass, a stone of some kind, some sort of pearly white stone and a great axe. Dang. Most of which, all of which, other than the gold, have the opportunity to be identified. Okay. Because assuming you would detect magic, you would detect the hell out of it. Tulok takes all of them and turns to Physic and says, Physic, I found what seems to be a crate of items here. Let's, uh, let's go get Lady Gilda now. And we can discuss these up top. And he okay. starts paddling out. All right. And on the way out, could Physic throw, like, uh, oh, I don't have any darts left, do I? But if there's any, like, little rock or anything in the boat or anything he can grab to throw towards that land and see if anything kind of stirs. Uh, yeah, you want to just throw some random object on your person? <laughs> yeah, one of the pans that he has on it. Like, it's one of those cast iron pans that's just so beyond repair that you're like, dude, that's a tragedy. They're coming around this corner from the chest, so he'd like to get it as close to that patch of land as he could, but that's what, 30 feet away, so... Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, you sh- it's basically going to be AC5 to try and, try and land it where you want. But you can, by all means, give it a toss. But roll me, a, roll me a, a check similar to like throwing a dart there, just like thrown, thrown up and check. Thrown up and check. Okay, that's a fourteen. Uh, yeah, and you you land it exactly where you want, and it disturbs the water, but nothing else seems to happen. Okay, and and he was doing it on the way out, just like silently, kind of watching to make sure nothing was going to be coming up behind them. Okay. All right. Tulak paddles the boat out and back to the dock and would like to tie it up using the line. Okay. Walks up to Lady Gilda. So it appears there is some land down there, just shortly in. We didn't see any creatures, but I did find a chest with some items. Come, let's take a look. And he walks back into the boathouse. She winds up the rope, uh, sets the torch in the old fire pit, so it's kind of like illuminating the area, and uh, picks up her shield. Okay. Okay, so I would like to start with the unusual object. Actually, in a lot of ways, maybe I'm not even the right person to be doing this. My highest is occult at five, and I know you guys are... Yeah, Fitz is going a little bit higher because he's he's an intelligence-based 
uh, character as well. You threw yeah. everything in the party loot, did you? Yeah. Yeah, it's in the party loot. So the uh, the unusual object there is 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 the pearly white stone. Uh, I just forgot to rename it a bit there, but that's uh, that's the one there. So Tulok hands it to Physic and Cass join Pass to try to aid. Okay, so occultism, may say. Uh, yeah, any any of the well, whatever you want, uh, realistically. Yeah, they're they're all pretty similar like that. Oof, six on the die for a thirteen. I do not aid with a nine. Mm. Yeah, no, no such luck. Uh, Gilda will attempt her own religion check. That is a natural twenty for a twenty-four. Ooh, hell yeah! Nice, Ooh, Fuck nice. Yeah. DC was twenty on this one actually. Ooh, and uh, it is a, a pearly white spindle aeon stone. Nice. Oh shit. And when you invest this item, it is an invested item, uh, it slowly starts to heal your wounds, restoring one HP every minute. Oh. A resonant power grants you uh, resistance to one negative uh, damage if if you are able to take advantage of a resonant power of an Aeon Stone. Um, I forget, I kind of forget how that works, but there there is something there, an extra mechanic there. But, I mean, this is clutch. This is a pretty clutch item, I would say, because if you spend 10 minutes refocusing... You get 10 HP yeah. back. That's big. Yeah. Mm. I mean, I want that. <laughs> I Honestly, it makes sense for you to have it. Yeah, you're the first one in the room every time. You should probably take that. Okay. Oh, no one's going to compete? Oh, man. <laughs> well, Physic can heal Tulak. I want can it he too. Can he, though? <laughs> oh, you can heal Tulak, yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, we can roll for it. Like, no, 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 no. I mean, I want it too, but I think it makes more sense for you to have it. All right. You polite motherfucker. <laughs> Goddamn Canadians. It's going to put that one in my inventory then. Amazing. Uh, all right, what's next? Tulok turns to Lady Gilda and says, well, you did a good job of figuring out what that was. How about this? And pass the unusual wand. And he will attempt to join pass with her. 17, so I aid. Eight is plus one? Yeah. Wait. It's only a 13. Uh, no, unfortunately, my studies didn't really include too many ones. It was more combat. Maybe I'd have better luck with the uh, the great axe. All right. Well, he will attempt to aid on that then. Well, does physics? Do you want to give the wand a go? I mean, sure. I'll take a religion check on that. I. It, it can be any religion's just my only good magic. Oh, well, I already rolled religion before you said that, and I get a nineteen. Okay, totally fine. I wand of magic failed missile. On an aid. On Wand of Magic <laughs> Missile. That sounds great. It's got a single, only a single charge, uh, but wands work differently in 2E than 1E. They don't have multiple charges. Rather, you they have like always have a, a single instance of a spell, but then you can uh, they recharge once per day. I think it is or something like that. Uh, you can act, you, act, you can try to overcharge the wand as well. Once per day, you can overcharge. That's what I'm looking at. But there are downsides or possible downsides to overcharging a wand. Um, okay. Otherwise, I, th- I can't. Re- I can't quite remember. We'll have to look it up. But um, there are uh, definitely um, ways to recharge it without having to like buy a whole new one. Yeah, I've yet to encounter wands before. Like, do you have to be a magic user for this? Uh, yes, I believe so. I actually, as well, don't know how they work in two E as compared to one E, which is. God, now I can't even remember the parlance. Yeah, for one is a UMD check. Usually, you have to it has to be on your spell list. UMD, in right. One E, uh, one can cast a spell once per day. Uh, you have to be holding it, obviously, and it must be on your spell list because you're the one casting the spell. You use your DC and attack roll. So, it, you just get a free instance of magic missile once per day, yeah. which is fucking awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Very Seriously nice. Seriously good. Yeah. So two lock. I think I want to roll for that one. <laughs> Ooh. is that on your spell list no i don't have a spell list i'm a paladin um, no, yeah it's all yours but yeah, it looks like Tulak gets that one yeah <laughs> uh but i will roll a religion or a lore heraldry if you'll allow me on the great axe i don't know if there's any iconography on it uh on the uh the axe sorry yeah. oh yeah so the axe i probably should have said this before the axe bears a design of a human skull would it be considered heraldry <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go with no. Okay. <laughs> it was a man named Harold, if that counts. Genuinely carved in, uh, as opposed to, uh, yeah, it's it's like, yeah, it's very carved out yeah. uh, of the of the head in between the blades. It's it, yeah, it doesn't appear to be heraldry in any way. Okay, just something more aesthetic. 
Well, heraldry just refers to like nobility, like iconography of nobi- right. noble houses. Like it, does, it can be a bas relief or a tapestry. Yeah, like it, it's it's not yeah. indicative of the medium. Uh, that is the seventeen uh, religion on the unusual great act. Anyone want to aid? Yeah, I'll I want to get on in that. Oh, critical. Okay, never mind. Hell yeah, plus two. This might be Scout's first aid. <laughs> uh, second, second, second. 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 <laughs> uh, this is known as a retribution axe. It was DC 18, so you just barely got it. Oh, wow. It is a plus one great axe. And whenever a creature damages you with an attack, the skull changes its appearance to look like the face of that creature. And you gain a plus two circumstance bonus to your next damage roll against the creature before the end of your next turn. Because the face reshapes each time you're damaged, you get the additional damage only if you attack the creature that damaged you most recently. Uh, okay, that's not a rune. It's uh, it's just like it is a it's part this of the is axe. its own okay. unique magic weapon. Yeah, that's really cool. It's a reasonably common one, but yeah, yeah, I can't use it, but I'll I can carry it until we want to <laughs> dump it. Unless one of you guys wants it. Uh, uh, is Gilda trained in martial weapons? Uh, yeah, I am, but I have to put my shield down. Which is my yeah, whole okay. thing. Being a Bastion archetype, it does not make a whole lot of sense to use a two-handed weapon. Yep, yep, that tracks. I mean, it's yeah. worth sixty gold, so yeah, that'll pay for all of the laborers to dig those sta- those uh, those stairs out. <laughs> it also could be a really good last-ditch stand weapon, though. Yeah, be like, please take this. Everyone and goes down, me. and it's you and the enemy, and you just drop the shield and draw the axe, and it's hitting you, and you're getting bonuses to your damage. Like it, it could be. It, oh, yeah, like, possibility. she'll carry yeah. it until they want to sell it, but unless one of yeah. you guys want it. No, nope. she comes up across like the Witch King of Angmar, she will be set. <laughs> I don't get that <laughs> reference. The Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings yeah, yeah, of course you don't. <laughs> I don't remember James a witch in Lord of the Rings. Um, <laughs> I am it was no the, man. The, the, head of, the head of the Nazgul guys, mm-hmm. you know, the... The one, the one that, the one that's defeated because of a of a gender issue. <laughs> what are you guys no, talking about? No man can, no man can kill me. I'm no man. <laughs> Eowyn <Yeah>. kills him. <laughs> Spoiler. Well, it all started when Spock went Spoiler. back in time to meet Luke Skywalker. Okay. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. <laughs> there we go. It all makes sense now. <laughs> uh, okay. Do you want to do the unusual compass there, Physic, or uh, is is that a I guess that's also a magical check, right? It's a magical item. Mm-hmm. I'm hot, so I'm just going to try to aid. It might be worth you just doing the check because you're hot. All right, perfect. I am <laughs> rolling the check. Let me aid you. Okay. Uh, what What are you rolling? Oh, I rolled occultism. Oh, I'll aid you on that. I will also attempt an aid with my cooperative nature. I did not aid. No, me neither. And I rolled a 15. Okay, so you're not still hot. No, you're not sure. Men's not hot. Chilled off quickly. Uh, can I attempt my own check? You can, but the DC is increasing. I know. Now. That's why I'm just going to do it okay. now before we yep. get... I aid. aid. Okay. No, never mind. That's 12. <laughs> God damn it. Worst case scenario, I guess we can bring it back to Rin or use it as a regular compass. Does it seem to function as a regular compass? Like, does it? Point it absolutely north? does. Yeah. Okay. Definitely re- operates as a regular compass. Yeah. Well, maybe it's just a regular compass. But you can you can tell light is or sorry not light uh, magic is um, is emanating from it. Right. So it's got like a glow in the dark dial on it. Got it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got something just like this out of a cereal box when I was a girl. <laughs> Cardboard exists in this world, right? Sure. <laughs> it's like a crate. I'm, it's just really thick parchment. I assume brown uh, brown paper bags do. So cardboard, yes. Do they have thing? not really pulp mills? <laughs> like, I mean, we're in a lumber town, Otari. I suppose, yeah. If anywhere yeah. did, it would be this place, or at least at least they ship their product to a place that does it. Yeah. All right, we've done that. Do we need to go? Inform Mr. Tangletop that his wisps have been taken care of, or are we um are we going into that cave there, fellows? Neither seem like very attractive options. I say we go into the cave. We are here to search and who knows how long until the light goes again. Otari is in danger. And you said it wasn't particularly small right it it does open. it's not like uh it's not like a confined space is it well we just saw the one bank i won't lie to you we didn't go in too far but there is there is land all right 
I absolutely trust the two of you. Other than that one time Physic cut me when he was trying to heal me, you've done me no wrong. <laughs> so I'll follow you in. Physic will be looking straight down at the dock on his way into the boat. <laughs> after the next uh, Gilda picks up the torch from the fire pit in her free hand and heads to the boat with them. All right, you guys are going in the cave. Not going to explore the ruins more? We'll come back. It's still dark. Like... Yes, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be high on your list of priorities, genuinely. All right, with the dagger still glowing, Tulak hops in and they make their way into the cave. When Gilda steps into the boat, does it start to sink at all? Like, will it? Will the boat float all three of them? Oh, no, the boat's structural, the structural integrity of the boat is sound. Okay. Very sound, yeah. I haven't seen this map yet. This is exciting for me. <laughs> this is, yeah. This is less exciting for me. <laughs> <laughs> It looks scary, doesn't it? Uh, I also can't really see anything, even with the torch icon on. There's not much to see until you move, to be honest. So it's 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 very tight. Dang little cave is all it is. So as soon as you hit, like there's a, a a bit of a as you're as you're coming in with the light, you can see that there's some uh, there's a bit of a line where the the water gets more shallow, like right across there. Okay. And so it becomes a little more obvious that um, you can you can walk in, and it would be it would be certainly be difficult terrain to to wade through. But then once you get to where Tulak is to the northeast, uh, there is some land to come on. But also straight to this more middle south, there is similar land as well, and you can actually see broken and ruined boats in a little open area. It's foreboding. <laughs> yeah, our boat looked so good coming in here. Oh my god, Scott, get out! <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I think Gilda will just kind of search this general area. So wait, what was it? so the boat? The boat's still going to float through the may, the most of the area. It's not going to stop on that that line. As soon as she can get out of the boat, she gets out of the boat. Like as soon as she can stand in the water, she's fucking out of okay. that boat. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So okay. If she gets out of the boat. She kind of strolls over in this direction. Tulak rows the boat to that shore. We're going to make a little square here and call it the boat. Where do you want it? Uh, here? Well, I was just going to put it like somewhere where it won't float away. Yeah, so it pulls it up half on, like, onto, all the way out onto the shore. Yeah, and, and how deep is this shallow water? Because... Uh, it's, it's pretty... I mean, it's like uh, one to two feet deep, depending. But it's muddy underneath, so it's, it is difficult terrain. And it, yeah, it's not... Uh, it's going to be pretty high on you. Okay, uh, yeah, physic, no, there's but... no waiting from Physic. He's, well... Yeah, he's, he's staying in the boat until he gets to shore. And Tulak casts Detect Magic. Uh, and there is, yeah, there no no magic in the, in the vicinity. Okay, and then he will avoid notice. Um, oh, wait. No, there is some magic in the vicinity. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> he turns right. to them and says, I can sense magic within 30 feet of me here. It's somewhere close, but I know not where. Uh, Gilda starts rummaging through the old boats and shit, see if it's in there. And there's a there's a passageway down here as well as the one with you. Uh, but did we see stairs back the other way? Maybe we should make sure that those are the ones that lead up to either the workshop or the uh, uh, what have you, just so we at least have a means of escape. I trust your judgment then, Lady Gilda. Please lead the way. She will. I guess pull Physic and Tulak in the boat over to the staircase. Yee, okay. boat ride. You pull the boat onto the shore and head towards the staircase. But you notice, or rather you don't notice soon enough, that there is a large amount of brown mold all around the area just below the staircase and you feel your body literally physically run cold like the heat is being sapped from you and I need a fortitude save okay je suis expert you can tell because you said it in French <laughs> That is another 12. That is my third 12 in a row. Oh, God. Which is a failure. Yeah, that sounds about right. Which means you take a total of 14 cold damage. Oh, my God. That's so many. 
Okay. And it gets worse. And the mold immediately spreads further out towards the boat. And it starts to encompass a larger area. It moves about five feet further in or, and land and up the stairs. So uh, essentially a 10 foot radius from where you're standing now. Tulak sees Lady Gilda react when she gets out of the, or when she approaches. Yeah, she just starts shivering feverishly as she's trudging through this brown mold. It jolts her whole body, like, really hard. Gilda, get get away. I, what is that? Are you okay? Uh, and she will jump towards the staircase because it's closer at this point. Okay, yeah. We're not an initiative here. I just... She can jump faster than she can walk. So. Sure. Okay, you literally leap. <laughs> yeah, she literally she takes the jump action. Okay, yeah. uh, amazing. <laughs> roll me, just roll me a courtesy athletics. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's exactly what it's going to be. Because uh, if you roll a natural one, it might 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 be shit. Not so much. That's a 25. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, you react accordingly. <laughs> just like creates this universe's version of like the, the Foldsberry flop. And as it spreads and Lady Gilda jumps forward, um, you guys are in the boat on the shore. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tulak. You were ahead of, of Physic. I need you to roll your own fortitude safe. Oh, yeah. I was just moving the boat away. Because <laughs> it's, it's come close to you now, and you can feel the effects of it sapping the heat out of you. 19. All right. You take uh, seven cold damage. You succeeded. Okay. You take half. So I, if we're not in initiative order, then I'm going to start paddling the boat away. Okay. Whew. We did not care for that there, boys. I definitely pulled the warmth right out of me bones. Be careful of that. I, I can't tell if it's something under the mold or if it's the mold itself or whatever it is. It's certainly not going to be good for us in the long run. Okay, I've said it before, but this really seems like a great spot to throw an alchemist fire. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with Now that I can see everybody's token on the map, I'm not going to splash damage any of my friends that are going to be pissed <laughs> off at me later. <laughs> we'll see. Well, let me just, let me just, uh, I mean, are you just going to go for it? Or do you want to like do uh, a knowledge uh, check first? This is, this the is my, knowledge uh, check would really help. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go for one of those, too. Let's go for a proper order of operations here. Um, who's rolling? Uh, and it will be... Uh, we can go with uh, nature or survival for this one. Oof. Uh, I will... Uh, I'm just both the same for me. I'll just join pass and aid. If you boys want to look into that, I'll take a look up this hallway and maybe find us a way out. A uh, way out would be much appreciated right now. I got a 21, uh, 22 with the aid. Nice. Okay. Uh, this is brown mold. And uh, fire is exactly what you don't want to use. Oh. Uh, it is actually weak to cold. And uh, it is immune to things like critical hits, precision, that sort of thing, because it's not really an entity so much. But it is, it is mm. sapping heat because it loves heat. It's weak to cold because it loves heat. Okay. This is a hazard, essentially, in mechanical terms. So if you want to disable it, it will require a survival check to safely remove the mold from the area. But it will take you time to do so. And is it something that, like, well, like Gilda did, you could either, like, tumble through or jump over pretty... Yeah, but you run the risk of taking the damage anyway, just passing through. Yeah, it's less it about stopping really near it or in it and more about passing through it. It's going to leech at you the whole lot, the whole time. Okay. So let's try to deal with it because we don't want to get separated here. Yep. Uh, what's your survival or nature there, Tula? Zero and one. Oh, those are great. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's Lady Gilda's? Zero and zero. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and the one that's just throwing rocks like a champ over here has five and five, um, but negated by my previously stated rock throwing abilities. <laughs> just get after it, buddy. Nothing else yep. we can do. Roll in survival. Removing some mold. That's a 16. It's all right, right? 
It's a, it's a tweener. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. It's a tweener. Does anyone want to aid? Maybe, perhaps, it might help. <laughs> can we? Yeah, but can we aid in? You can aid in basically anything, man. Anything you can imagine. Fifteen. Uh, so seventeen now. Yeah, uh, yeah, and it, it's gonna take you the better part of like you know maybe about half hour, forty five minutes. But uh, yeah, you can you can safely scrape all of this away. Uh, while they do that, Gilda is gonna just kind of gently explore uh, up here. Which way does this door open? Does it open towards her, or away from her? Yeah, it'll open t- towards you. Okay, that's actually perfect. Like when I'm asking that, it's so if I close the door, I can throw my weight against it and keep it closed. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, no, for sure. Okay. Yeah, and that's where we're gonna call it. For it, if if not just general knowledge of, of fire safety, <laughs> I've I've no doubt in my mind that you're the fire uh, the floor fire captain on this podcast. Oh, I mean, maybe <laughs> I'm sure the building codes in the evil lighthouse are just so fucking strict that everything is right up to code. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll just remind you, I, I did say this I think before I can't remember if it was on mic or not, but all of the doors, unless otherwise specified, are swollen and sodden. Uh, they don't require an a- uh, athletic check to open, per se, and again, unless I say otherwise, but they do take, if we're initiative over, take a certain amount of actions based on whether or not you're trained or untrained Yeah. Uh, with athletics. So it takes effort to, to open these doors. That's fine. She's going to take the defend action and crack this door while they're removing the mold. While they're taking that 30 minutes, her objective here is to either find a combat and retreat or to find a way out. So I'm just going to keep doing okay. that and moving forward. Gotcha. That's foreboding as fuck. Uh, I just opened the door to a skeleton, a large skeleton on a table. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, awesome. the uh, the uh, the room uh, has a ruined table and several destroyed chairs that lie in a heap in the middle of the room, along with several large bones. And almost as soon as you open it and take a peek in, there's a bit of stirring amongst the rubble. She immediately shuts the door. You boys mo- want to hurry up? Ah, uh, there's some things and stuff up here that I'm not quite keen on. And she immediately just leans back in the door with all of her weight. I'm just going to stay up here for a couple of minutes until you guys get that started out. Physic had just finished scraping mold off the floor, being like so proud of the cleaning job he did. Like, cleanliness is next to godliness. I need to know exactly <laughs> how long that takes. In minutes. Uh, the what? Sorry. Uh, the cleaning of the mold. Like how much time we have between now. Oh and yeah, when the mold's no, it's cleared. it's like, it's like a it's gonna be thirty to forty five minutes okay. of just like slowly clearing it and and maintaining safety. But I I just rolled a perception for you as you hold this door closed and and uh, you don't hear any sound from the side of the door, um, through that whole period. Okay. You hear nothing. Uh, thirty minutes or forty five minutes. I mean, I guess it doesn't I, matter. I, I did okay. 45 in the clock. I did 45 in the clock. Uh, yeah, okay. 45 will bring me back up to hell, uh, full, so that's fine. Nice. Hey, I forgot you had Man. the fucking stone! That oh, thing is so, so fucking good for how big that mold hit was. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Cool. Oh, uh, right, how well, do you invest in, a, in an option? Because I didn't invest yet. Oh, it, it, takes, it only takes a small amount of time, um, so you should, still should be in the clear. Uh, I think it's like... 10 minutes or an hour or something like that at, at most but I'm pretty sure it's less than 5e's usual rules so 5e's an hour yeah so he has a white Aeon stone circling around his head she that's uh that's correct yeah pearly white cool. yeah she got Scott uh so super quick seconds yeah okay sweet so she just pulls this Aeon stone out starts this pearl starts floating around her head and she just feels the the warmth soak back into her bones as she heals while you guys clear out the mold nice Meanwhile, from up the hall, she hears, These Melder stains are just impossible. We're going to get you some gloves <laughs> when we go back to town there, Physic, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Tulak moves the boat to shore and alights it. All right, well, you clear the mold, and Lady Gill's holding the door, but there's no sound, but saw some stirring in this room f- full of large bones. Yeah. All right, I saw... Oh, did I see the bones moving or, like, the furniture around the bones moving? Ah, you couldn't quite tell. It was it was quick enough. You couldn't quite tell. Could have been some rats under the bones. Uh, I am going to, before I crack this door, uh, charge up Lay on Hands. Oh, no, never mind. I can't. I don't think I can charge it. Tulak is holding the wand in one hand behind Lady Gilda. 
Can I just, I just want to ask quickly, is, is there, is any, does anyone do anything besides prepping for battle between the clearing in the mold and, and entering the hallway? Is there, can I search my way up the hallway while we kind of like, we, we weren't exactly hurrying our way up there. Is there anything in the hallway of note? Uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty, pretty stark, um, as far as you can tell. The stairs do in fact lead up and not down, that's correct? You no, know, they do both, depending on which way you're facing. <laughs> you know, you got me. Depending you on what end me. you're at. Yeah. <laughs> Tulak is avoiding notice and will cast Detect Magic. But he also turns and says, Can I have some quick healing? I did take a little bit of a hit there. Okay, well, uh, Physic being Physic will administer a... What do I got here? I will attempt to aid if you're going to treat wounds. I guess, yeah, we've got the time. I might as well do that. Uh, I do aid. Skin of my teeth. Excellent. Because uh, I guess I'm not rolling against James, so this might go well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a 19 for 20 total, so... <laughs> nice. <laughs> rolling big again. 6 HP back. <laughs> I'll take it. That's pretty much perfect. I'm just one down, so that's good. Right, that's... Yeah, you don't want to be, uh, like, too cocky and be at full health all of a sudden. If only you had that Aeon Stone, you could spend one minute to get that health back. No big deal. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe I mean, you roll through we it. could do it. I could just take it off. Like, it would take me a, a no, 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 six no, no. seconds to take it off, six seconds for you to put it on, and then a minute so for you to be. get the health back. Like, <laughs> yeah. There's rules with things like that where it's like you can't have it on a new person within 24 yeah, hours. Yeah, yeah. There's definitely something in the background somewhere. <laughs> uh, okay. Taking the defend action, Gilda will open the door if everybody's good. Yeah, I'm going to be avoiding notice. And step into the room. All right. Oh, sorry, well, I did say earlier that I was going to cast Detect Magic right before we entered as well. Do yeah, no, and you, you do Detect Magic. I remember you saying that, yeah. Okay, that's um, it. There is magic, yeah. And, okay. uh, all right, everyone moves a square forward in the line. Lady Gill steps into the room, and sure enough, the stirring begins again. And slowly but surely... The bones start to assemble into a large formation. Pieces of armor plop up onto the bones and horns lock onto a skull and it slowly builds into a massive skeletal minotaur. Ah, come on, Aurori. Just one bloody room without something trying to kill me in it. (laughs) <laughs> and that's where we're going to call it. Stemming the Tide is an actual play podcast of the Adventure Path Abomination Vaults and is produced by the Uncharted North Network. Stemming the Tide uses trademarks and or copyrights owned by Paizo Inc. used under Paizo's community use policy. We are expressly prohibited from charging you to use or access this content. Stemming the Tide is not published, endorsed, or specifically approved by Paizo. For more information about Paizo Inc. and Paizo products, visit paizo.com. Music is composed by Will Savino and artwork by Greyhood. Stemming the Tide is recorded remotely using Foundry Virtual Tabletop. If you wish to connect with us or support this project and projects to come, we can be found at unchartednorth.ca, patreon.com slash unchartednorth, and on all major social media platforms. Links to all credits can be found in the episode description and our website. Thanks for tuning in.